Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen. We are backstage once again for the final elimination best of three. It is going to be Titan versus Banana Kinnips as you can see. We have a camera now! So Jason Chaplin is going to be joining me for this one. First off, you can see the maps. They were on your screen a moment ago. It is going to be Train, Inferno and Cobble. What do we make of this one? Following what was an epic best of three a moment ago with NIP. I think it's going to come down to that first map. I mean, if Titan won't have a chance to win, they need to win Train. Um, going on a Cobble, it's going to be really tricky considering they just played Cobble yesterday against Fnatic and got absolutely stomped. It was 16-6. Yeah. Um, they did beat Na'Vi on it yesterday, but Na'Vi are kind of a shade of their former self. So it's kind of difficult to look at that and expect them to do better against Fnatic this time. So Train, it's going to come down to that one for me. If they can pick up that one, they might have a chance at Inferno, but it's Fnatic. It's the best team in the world, hands down. Uh, they did lose to TSM, funny enough, though, yesterday, but it's still a Fnatic, no matter what. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm looking at the, the bands in front of us. We have it on a, a beautiful bit of paper. That's how it works out here. Uh, Mirage actually was taken away by Train, Ops, uh, by Titan as their last choice. Obviously, it's it's Ban Ban, Pick Pick, Ban Ban, and then you end up with the last one. So actually, they kind of guided it to Cobble. I mean, in ban fairness, to be fair, Fnatic are really good on every map. Yeah, they... They banned out Cash to begin with, then Fnatic banned out Overpass, which you would oh, expect. Okay. Uh, oh, I see. The two maps, written. and then Fnatic banned out Dust 2, which probably what Titan were hoping it would lead towards, but obviously it had to take out Mirage because Fnatic are pretty well known for that one. Yeah. But the problem is they fall back to Cobble, as you said. You know, Fnatic are one of the best teams in the world on Cobble. They've proved it over and over again, and we'll see how it works out. See whether it gets there, because as we just saw, NIP taking down Envy 2-0, Somewhat surprising, Dust 2 and Inferno, yep. so anything can happen here in Dubai. I think it's mostly just going to come down to how Shocks and RPK play for Titan. Because uh, as Moses and I were saying on the analysis yesterday, that if Titan want to show up, Shocks needs to perform. And Shocks has been kind of working with RPK a lot, making sure that them two together can really work side by side and, uh, and facilitate each other to get these nice opening frags. So if they can step up, I can see them putting up a decent fight against Fnatic, but then again, it's still Fnatic. You still have four of the t uh, the best aimers in the world on the team. So Titan, they, they, they honestly do have a chance, but we're going to find out how well they've been working on Train. You know, you heard Maniac talking about in the interview saying that they've seen some progress over time. They've seen some progress since the team has shuffled around a little bit. Um, they still have a while to go, and they realize that, and this is a good opportunity for them to challenge themselves against one of the best teams in the world. We should, of course, remind people that, you know, Fnatic did lose on Train to TSM. Uh, back in the Fragbite Masters the other day for the week, so they are not infallible. They can lose games, as they proved yesterday, but the problem is they did lose a match yesterday, so I feel this might be an angry Fnatic coming out. Titan, of course, just seen their French brethren losing out to NIP, so they were a little concerned. They were all sat together. It's still camaraderie still there. They're all still friends at the end of the day, uh, but uh, coming into this one, they can still, no doubt about it, the best team in the world. A little foot chase going on in the knife round here, trying to figure out, because Starting down the CT side is actually a pretty damn big deal here on Train. I feel like Train is still kind of one of those maps that it's not fully decided of what kind of side it is. I mean, you, obviously it's going to be kind of CT side just because it's Train and that's the way it naturally was, but you've seen a lot of really interesting results come in this map. I've seen a lot of teams take, you know, a hefty amount of T side rounds and then do fairly bad on the CT side. just depends on how comfortable you are in. Uh, we we're talking about Anders and I about TSM in particular, a very strong T side team now. When prior they were CT, but it's going to come down to this map. Can you get those uh, those T rounds? Most importantly, uh, against these, teams? especially if they get the setup on the double off. We'll see how it works out. As you saw, Titan did get that CT side. We are about to go live, live, live for the first round here on Train. It is the ESL ESEA Invitational. We are backstage in Dubai. Of course, the semi-finals will follow this one. The winner, of course, was Virtus Pro yesterday. They are awaiting the winner of this best of three. Meanwhile, TSM will be facing off against Ninjas in Pajamas. That will be the first semi-final of the day, starting off around about 7 p.m. Dubai time. I think you need to drop off about two to three hours, I think, for European time. Yeah, but here we now, go. Yeah. Okay, well, we do see both teams actually fully invested in armor, so nade, no nades across the team for both of them. And that's going to make things very, very difficult when it comes to, uh, you know, entering into these sites. He's already set up, has spawned them out in lower. I think he did just barely catch a glimpse of the bomb. But with Smith pushing out uh, of uh, Ali, or out of Ivy, they would pick up an early kill and get some more control on this outside, which is exactly where they're going. They're trying to create some pressure around the side. There goes a little attack down, but RPK goes big, picks himself up a double. Smith comes in. And that was a perfect round 
for Titan to start things off. Not losing a single man in pistol. Not what Fnatic would have envisaged. Starting up the T side, it's one of those rounds where you can really hope to try and pick up those three quick early rounds on the T side. But now with Titan, with SMGs and rifles in hand, this is going to make it a much tougher task for Fnatic. Well, the upside to not using any grenades in the pistol round is the fact that you're not going to telegraph anything. They're not going to know where you're going exactly because you're just going to rush straight through. But they have invested the Tech-9 and the CZ as an armor. Both my three on early kill and a Smith over towards Ivy. And the rest of his team is over towards uh, inside, potentially, with the rotate towards ladder room. So, Maniac might get overrun, potentially, in this situation. The smoke's coming in. They're going to push straight towards the site. Oh. Pushing around there, Maniacs. P90's not going to get put to work. Existence though, up on the trains, drops straight down in front of someone, he's completely flashed out, Flusher catches him with a knife, fantastic stuff there, and that's going to give him a whole chunk of change, and well, we were talking about the pistols, the rifles, it seems out that Fnatic did have a plan in place, that was a very impressive force eco that. Oh, what the kill that Ulfmeister got? onto Smith onto Ivy. It forced to rotate, it forced it so Maniac was the only man alive inside the actual B bomb site. So he got overrun relatively easy. Uh, they ended up getting knifed as well, which is a lot of extra money to the side of Fnatic. And you can see Titan responding with a force up as well. Smith sitting with a scout. See armor bought up across the team, just heading up for shocks and Maniac, but a lot of 5.7s to work with. And you can see Fnatic gonna slow down the pace. They don't want to give up anything they don't need to in this round. Not to mention they want to get as many t side rounds before they have to swap over to that CT side. JW getting a little probe out, comes out of Pop Dog. It's a quite a bit of a free walk up to Electric Box there. Well, Pronax alongside him there, slowly creeping forward. Of course, Titan with just his pistol. Smith's the only man with Scout in hand, not able to find anyone. JW is just getting a free pass. He's just walking straight through. He's going to catch RPK on the side. Not even anyone getting near him. Smith finally shows his position off, but he's completely caught out. He's going to get taken down by Olaf Meister, so he gets himself a double. Make it a triple. Has been this is all too easy for Fnatic. And Maniac, just the last man, hoping he can pick something out on the way out. And maybe get an exit kill. He should be able to get a Olaf Meister and will have access to a P90, but... That's not exactly the gun you want to have, but consider saving to the next round. Uh, they're not going to be able to force up in that. They might as well try to save as if they can. And the Pronex. Yeah, it's going to cost him his life as JW comes around the corner. So just a little saving grace for Titan, but not a great deal. They're going to have to save once again in Fnatic. Starting off, despite that pistol little calamity, they are going to be in a strong position. Try and take it to Titan once again. Yeah, so we're gonna see JW sticky with the MP7. Up against no head armor, and he realizes this. And this is something JW does so well. It's the fact that he realizes when the team's on eco and where they're gonna force up and try to stack the money as quick as he can. He's already able to pick up one. Yeah, already straight down there. JW a quick double. Let's say 12 minutes straight towards him. All up points to get a second. And again, it is just Maniac once again left all in his loan something. No worries, but he's gonna try and suss him out. Bronax with the spray down in the end. We'll pick up the headshot. And so, Fnatic 3-1. What will Titan do? Now they can afford a couple of weapons. They're gonna get some rifles in hand, all M4s across the board, but not a great deal of utility to slow down Fnatic. And that's kind of the, the problem that they're going to have. I mean, they're up against an op at a JW, so they're not going to have a lot of smokes to block him off, to cut him off from this map, and he's already going for the quick peek towards middle. That could have been really dangerous for Titan, already being a man down off the map. But you can see how comfortable he is. You see Titan trying to press his position, trying to take this area of the map away from them. And they Sorry, yes, RPK against pushed TSM, up. when he, he pushed out of double doors, it threw the, uh, threw oh, the flames, yeah, yeah. you were covering it yourself. It's just like, that's just the confidence of that guy. Just pushes straight out, uh, trying to land the shot. Meanwhile, Olaf Meister probing around Ivy, not really getting a glimpse. You can see it's a B setup. They're ready to go. So Olaf Meister trying to be the distraction, but he's been taken down. That's going to free up Titan if they need to make the move. Are they going to realize it was simply a distraction though? They still have the opportunity to rotate on the outside if they want to. They do have quite a bit of utility to work with. They can see a lot of smokes to use for themselves and flashbangs. On the other side, though, Existence is the only man holding onto a smoke, which he's going to use, it looks like, to block off Upper and maybe allow Maniac to push. And I think Maniac is just sitting in the smoke, and Pornex is right there behind him! Oh, they just passed each other by! But he couldn't get back to but he completely sells the dummy. Pornex finds him, and now they know. It is B-side that's going to get hit. Existence tries to push on through. Catches one, but doesn't manage to land the shot. Gets the bomb planter, but he's already got the plant in. And now this has all gone wrong for Titan. It could have been so right. Just a few little steps in the smoke could have turned that entire round on its head. 
really unfortunate to see something like that too, because that's something you can't really expect Pronax to push the smoke at the same time you do, and it would have worked out really well if he picked up that kill on the Pronax. But then again, the way they've been holding the inner sight is you have Maniac tucked in really close, Existence watching from afar, so when it comes down to an execute onto that site, Maniac's all by himself. You know, typically you'll see teams, you know, want to play for a retake, have both men decently far back just so they can stay alive and re-engage when the team is fully there. And I should interested to see how Titan are holding things in the inner, but still they're being worked across the map. Both mice are just constantly pushing outside towards Ivy, constantly keeping Smith held back and not able to get aggressive. You see Pronax now taking over that torch, and they're just walking all over Titan so far. All F Meister is just terrorizing the yard right now. Flusher just joining him, pushing on in there, went for that. SMG to grind and get the extra cash, but hasn't been able to find anyone because, well, they've all gone running. You can see Existence of Maniac over in B-side. Smith's trying to get around the back, trying to see if he can sneak up on anyone, but looks like Fnatic are covering just about every angle. You see Connect, Existence does get one down. That's Flusher. Maybe he can recover the right weapon, and he has. Gonna get it and run a hell away. Try and save it for the next round. Bomb was already planted over on A-side, so JW up on high, drops down, gets Existence. Just an eat the grenade for the pleasure. He's going to recover the SMG, but that'll be about all he gets. Actually, or can he? I think it's. Did the, where did the grenade send it? I don't think he can find it. He hasn't been able to find it. Nope, JW catches him down. And well, it's all too easy for Fnatic, it seems. After Titan picked up the pistol, we thought, we thought maybe they were going to have a game on their hands, but Fnatic is in their stride right now. And it's starting to damage the economy of Titan. You can see their force up, though. They've gone for a double up setup. I feel like one thing that makes train really difficult to play on the CT side is the fact that you can't push out and gather information easily. If you push out alley, you can have someone holding towards middle to spot you out. If you push in upper, or sorry, inside, you can be spotted out from there as well. It's just really hard to gather info We're on a map like, uh, let's say, Mirage. It is a lot more easy to facilitate that. But like you're saying, Fnatic is walking all over Titan. But Smith's finally able to respond. They're finally able to get an op in his hand, as well as consistent. So run that double up setup, and if they lose this round, We'll be hurting for the next few. Titan really need to get some under their belt here as well. So anything is a bonus for them. Again, JW down early on. That's the orbs dropped. With the double up setup, he was the real pressure on them. But the Smiths can find another as Olaf just lurks in the smoke at Ivy. The bomb is heading his way, so it seems that Pronax and Crow are heading through and they've just perfect timing. Smith is looking the other way and they're creeping through the smoke around the side. RPK just has a little glimpse, doesn't see anything, doesn't realize the danger that's lurking that's awaiting him in the smoke, but he could pop flash out, which is looks like he's just about to do it. Perfect! Lights himself up, doesn't get the second on off by some it's, it's a bite of the cherry, doesn't manage to land the shot, but knows he's got one pinned around the side there. And that's going to slow things down. There's only 28 seconds on the clock. But now they have to push it. Existence manages to catch Flusher. He tries to come through Pop Dog. In this round, it's just backfired on Fnatic. Crimson Olofmeister, the last two standing. They have to go for kills. They have to find something. It's not going to work. Olofmeister now. The last man lingering around the smoke will get taken down. So Titan finally, the double up setup working out well for them. Yeah, very well, and this is where we saw Fnatic come back against TSM on Dust2, where they lost 8 straight. They pick up the double up setup, and they win 5 straight off the back. So if Titan can build up some momentum off of this, it'd be very good for them. The only downside is it's such a heavy investment. You can see their economy. Only Shock sitting over 1,000, currently at 3,700. So if they lose this round, if they lose every single person on their team, it'd be really hard for them to buy up into the next round to build up this economy yet again. But look at this. Shock's pushed up very aggressively. Catch out, Olaf Meister. Trying to creep around once again. Darts on through, but that smoke saving Smiths, but he doesn't realize the danger that is awaiting him. Smiths has a good beat though, but the second that smoke clears, remember Olaf is just going to take him clean out. He's coming back through the smoke, had no clue he was there, completely wiped out there. Olaf Meister will get taken down by the spray of Maniac, but he's the last man standing in a three on one scenario. Now, he's going to hear Crims planting that bomb nearby, so he might be able to try and catch him on the exit. No, JW will find him coming through TT spawn. So 6-2, Fnatic answer straight back, and that is just going to cripple Titan even more. And we have to keep in mind, there was one big change that happened to the map recently. Well, I guess it's not that big, but it's very subtle. Uh, the grenades used to get stuck in like the train tracks, so they wouldn't do as much damage. So you see a lot of teams invest in a Molotovs instead because they'd be more effective to clearing out zones. But you can see Fnatic currently running five grenades with those recent changes. So I want to see how... You know, such a subtle change like that on a map like training can change the way you play it. You can see Titan again forced on the save because they lost their double ops, they lost that last round. And 
there's really not much hope for them to pick up really anything. They've given up full control of Yard. Fnatic just going to walk straight through again. JW's done this before, and he's going to spot out basically no one. The Smith's an RPK there in Ivy. Shox is going to be the first to peek. Catches JW in the back there, manages to find the head. Now that's an all. The rescue has done a light leak. JW, why do you not have it? Oh, always have it all. But he didn't have it this time. There's a grenade coming through. One of the ones you called about. Trips manages to land that. Olaf gets himself a double and resistance pinned in the corner with Maniac. Trying to push around from the corner. Crims finds himself another clean up crew there, as you would expect. As you mentioned, they just walked into Yard. Yeah. No resistance. I mean, it was a full eco time. It was. I mean, uh, you, this is not, that's what you're to expect. I mean, they did get the AK, um, but unfortunately, Shocks couldn't make much happen with it. And then now JW is finally getting something off. I mean, look at this. He has an op, and he's a bank of 8,000 that he's sitting on. Like, this man has ops for the next couple of rounds if they, they do seem to lose on these. Um, but finally, we're going to see Tiny get a little bit more aggressive. On the inside, they actually have uh, Maniac pushing through, but again, he gets caught out. Was only Smiths maybe equalizing money, I'm not too sure, yeah. but he was the only one that went for that M4 while everybody else was on the pistols. You can see Shox has recovered JW's AWP though. Now with two weapons in hand. Smith Existence gonna try and make use of the smoke push it just up the other side, but quickly reacts. Catches the shadow coming through there. Pronex holds off. Bomb is very safely down. I think Titan are just gonna try and keep hold of these two rifles they've got. RPK, the only man that had the pistol, was going to look and see if he could create any problems but they're going to escape to Ivy and it will be 8-2 for Fnatic a very very good CT, uh, T side starting up you, know, you were saying before we started this game you know with Fnatic losing to TSM are they coming into this sort of angry and the way they've been playing it seems like so because we haven't seen any like set executes on towards A on towards uh, B either it's just been a bloodbath constantly pushing through picking up kills trying to catch a Titan looking the wrong way and as you can see with the scoreline 8-2 they've already been able to do that the majority of the time it's M4 just going down at the end there as well. Cost them. They're hurting. They've gone for the rifles. This is really the round they need, or it may actually be an unsurmountable challenge when they get over to the T side themselves. Eight rounds on T is already an incredible start for Fnatic. They could go further. Remember, just looking at the NIP game, they went 12 3 in their first half against Pierce. We were going to see a similar sort of score coming out from Fnatic. PK trying to line up the shot, waiting for the smoke to clear, but it is a full yard push once again. That ball is going to force Shox to push forward. He's going to have to go straight to Electric. Pusher will take him down. There was a quick double response there from Titan, but immediately Fnatic responded. You see Olaf Meister getting involved. Still yet to get the bomb plant down, though. Minute on the clock. Three members of Fnatic in yard, while Smith looks down one. Sees if he can find. Just managed to catch a glimpse. Didn't quite see the man. Just bouncing at the top. That's just unlucky with the timing. Maniac does so. And that's the bomb carrier. So bomb now loose. In a really awkward situation. They can get a good crossfire. And more importantly, if Smiths can land a flick like that on Flusher, it will certainly do them great favors. Gets around the corner. Strain to connector. Gets himself down to Maniac. Now it's a one on one. And a tricky defensive setup here from Smiths. He's up close and personal. You can see he's just squatted, holding the angle. Knows where the bomb is. He knows the only angle that Chris can take and he will manage to take him down. A very important one-on-one -on -one duel for Smiths there to take that third round and give Titan the chance because their economy would have been tatters once again. And almost certainly you'd have been looking at a minimum of 10 rounds for Fnatic. I feel bad now because I called Smiths out yesterday in the game and announced that saying that he hasn't really been able to perform in the off. Not like when he was uh, back on very games in Dreamhack uh, in 2013. Seen him really be on par with a lot of the top offers, but he hasn't seemed to hit that stride. But he's starting to really step up against a team like Fnatic. Yeah, you look at 3 A, you're just kind of like, all right, well, that's not that big of a score difference, or that's not really much of an impact on him. Sorry, but he's picking up kills when he needs them. He pretty, pretty much single-handedly saved that last round. But now Baniac basically on the force up, trying to just keep some momentum going on their side. Right, build up some momentum, have the super monsters. That's a triple! Maniac just guns them down as they try and push it to B. Smith joins it, Pronax drops, and Olaf Meister left alone. Now, that, remember, they did build up a big bank, but this actually may well cost them. Not sure how much money they're going to have after this round, be able to rebuy up once again. I don't think so. I think Fnatic finally, finally, well, I mean, Crims can buy it for everyone, actually, with 10k in the bank, but everybody else is down to 2k. Olaf Meister all alone. Seeing if he can pick something up. I think he's actually hoping that someone rushes him down. And, but Titan, as we were talking about, their economy is not in the healthiest situation. They're probably not really going to go too aggressive looking for this gun. I think they're just going to send the one man. It looks like it's uh, 
They're just cutting off his exit. Shocks, yeah, Shocks yeah. just cutting off his exit, yeah. There's there's no need. I mean, the, the fact that they started this round with Famasas and they didn't have the money to invest into these bigger guns, these bigger, better guns, you might as well play it safe. You know Fnatic has a lot of money to spend because of the way these rounds have been going. The thing is, when Fnatic has won these eight rounds, it hasn't been like, uh, oh, two people alive, one person alive, and they clutch the round. It's been like four or five alive, and that's why they have two people on 10k plus with Crimson Pro now. So, they haven't really been able to make these rounds of Fnatic have won be too effective against them by eliminating a lot of the guns and uh, kind of keeping that economy in check. But like I said, Krim's basically able to buy up his full team. They have the AKs, and Smith is still sitting there with the AWP. So, still very much pressure on for Titan. Pick up as much on the CT side as they can now making it too hard for themselves. We can see it's a triple stack to Ivy from Fnatic this time. Flush is ready to drop in Pop Dog. JW went to come through a main get himself the corner, but Smith is holding the angle in a what, unorthodox aggressive position there with the AWP, but Shox gets a little peek and that smoke's going to go straight out, now he sees the little bullets raining down, just a little clip, that's all he had, but triple stacked out from Titan on Ivy, but it's going to slow him down, that smoke will stop that attack dead in his tracks, still a minute on the clock, plenty of time to play with for Fnatic. Yeah, they Basically, get full control of Yara by rotating RPK and Shocks back towards Ivy. A little bit questionable, but luckily for them, the rest of Fnatic haven't pushed out the direction, so they're still okay. They're still in a good position. Shocks are trying to push up to get really aggressive towards ladder room where Flusher will be waiting, and Smith is trying to basically control the valley. Ah, uh, Shocks pushed up a little too far. Flusher was waiting for him to pop up. Now, as he's mentioned, Courtyard was gifted to them effectively. But Titan backing away. RPK finally finding the back of Olaf Meister. Spins around, gets Prince, and he makes it a triple. No, Pronax will shut him down, but Smith is going to know the position now. But gets just one. It's Flusher that goes up on top of the train. And the second pushing on, it will be JW. Walking time for existence. A maniac to rotate around, but JW comes out on top once again. Just eight health for existence. JW with a triple. And Fnatic with their ninth round on the board on T side are looking very good here. I mean, they took it to overtime with TSM. TSM seems to be their bogey team, the only team really that has Fnatic's number effectively in a, a best of one, best of three, best of five, whatever scenario you put them in. <laughs> T TSM really can challenge them. The question is, have Titan got it in them? Because as you talked about, you know, third map being Cobblestone, this is one that Titan really needs to pick up. It is if they want to have a chance to win the best of three, but in the meantime, Fnatic, they're rushing in very quickly. They've only got pistols to await them. That's a good counter flash, so Maniac with this 5 7 up close to personal. Up and comes around the back, gets himself a double. Didn't get the support, possibly. They could have come from both angles there. Maniac had just pushed away to go and hook up the other side. So it's a little unfortunate. Now, with a completely in the hand of Fnatic, bomb's going to get planted down in the yard. Existent shocks and Maniac. Will they just be happy with what they picked up? I think they're going to have to go for it here. It's especially Existence. He's just got that. Pistol in hand, Olaf's gonna find existence with an easy flash on him there, gets himself the second on the spray down on shocks. Now it is 10 4. Titan, buy what you can, boys. Let's see, they have a mammoth task ahead of them on the T side. As you saw there on the scarboard, there's one thing that really sticks out like a sore thumb. Shocks on three kills this entire half, and it's kind of like the Kenya story for Titan. If Kenya isn't performing, Titan didn't perform. Well, if Shocks isn't performing, it seems like Titan can't perform now. Um, and, you know, one thing that I'll give Titan, though, I was talking to Maniac uh, between one of their games, and he was saying during Game of Paradise, they taught it as a, or they, they, te they looked at it as a boot camp, just to practice against some of the best teams in the world, kind of work on some things that have really been uh, ailing them over the past couple of weeks, and I feel like they're, they're still kind of in the same mindset here against Fnatic, play against the best team in the world, get that practice in, figure out where you're a little bit weak, and kind of work off that. <laughs> what a <laughs> shot on the JW. Beautiful stuff, but... Quickly answered, fortunately, RPK tries to creep up on Crims, but he's having none of it. This is the problem with Titan when they had next to no money, just five sevens, and that single M4 now remained for existence while the Fnatic sitting on a bankroll of AKs and just about anything else they want in their pocket. The somewhat unorthodox round, they're trying to creep up on positions. Shocks may actually catch Pronax off guard here, but Pronax has been very cautious. He's got the support, so even if he gets one, the revenge kill almost certainly won't happen. There it is, Crimson manages to quickly respond. But Existence lining up makes it a two on two here. Flusher and Olaf both working their way into Yard. Maniac's just come through Connector now, so they're going to have a little bit of vision there. Existence caught a glimpse. He knows there's one behind Electric. It's Flusher that's there. Maniac with the support trying to get up on high. 
Look at this. It's a clever rotate. And well, Titan are going to be out of position. Nothing they can do about this. They have to stack out one, two on one side, but that pump plant's going to come in. Now they have to try and go for the entrance. Try and retake this site in a almost unwinnable situation. Flusher down low. I think it's Olaf Meister that's gone up high. Still behind him. He's going to catch a glimpse. Maniac gets backed up heavily. He jumps out, but Existence gets the reply. Now it's a two on one. Olaf Meister with it all to do here. It's a quick defuse. He will get caught out. Existence rescues the round for Titan. But 10-5 is all they can gather. And honestly, after winning the pistol, you've got to think you could do better than that. Well, you'd hope so. Uh, but the fact that Fnatic really forced into the next round with the Tech 9, the CZ, and the Head Armor, they were able to get control off the back of that round and still go 3-1 up at that point, really kind of shows the true power of Fnatic. You know, they're a team that is really unstoppable, and teams have a hard time really getting a, a great read on them. I mean, if you look at how Fnatic played that T half, what do they do? They got really aggressive on inside, really aggressive on outside. Then they played slow quite a bit. They changed things up so often that Titan just couldn't get comfortable. But now they're on the T side. It's going to be very difficult for them to pull this one off. But it looks like they want to go towards inner, where Flush is the only man waiting. Yeah, just going to catch them out, but he saw them. That's the most important bit, and you already see Fnatic responding in kind. It's been a slow push because they did go down the main ramp. They've had to come all the way around the side. Now all off is in this tricky situation where he could come around the back of them. RPK is going to be the man that pushes onto. Doesn't manage to land the shots. Has to back away and RPK will take him down as Olaf Meister melts in the hail of bullets. Now on a three on three. Bomb down. Flush up moving in. Crims to the side of him and it's just a pincer move that clears them out of sight. RPK in existence both together trying to push on towards him and it's Flush up doing the job to keep them a guard. You can see they're already defused in existence. Tries to get around the side. Gets himself one but Flush will catch him out. And it's Fnatic to pick up the second pistol. And now that is a real serious problem for Titan. The thing is, you saw the way that Fnatic played it. Once Flush just saw the merchant on inside, he backed away, waited for his teammates to come in. All of my should have pushed in as well from Z and to take that as a team, where we've seen some teams already in the past just kind of commit that man and die for no reason. And on a round like the pistol round that you really need to pick up on the side of Titan, or even Fnatic if you want to pick up a clean victory, it's so crucial to play that situation correctly. But we're seeing Titan. One P250, the rest on Glocks, not really investing anything into this round. Where Fnatic do have two MP7s. So, they're obviously expecting time to buy up in the next round with guns since they got the bomb put in the first. And JW and Pronax trying to build up that economy here. While the rest of the team, Flusher and Crims, investing into the M4 outright with not a lot of utility on the back of it because they realize they need to have these guns come the AKs in round three. All the most playing sniper here with the mess. Actually managing to get a lot of attacks. That oh dear. Smith falls to his death. I mean, he was getting attacked as he fell down. Flusher catching the bomb carrier down there. It's just cleanup time for Fnatic. Not able to get anything down. So tight. Not able to get a single kill or a plant in that round with the pistols. So clean stuff for Fnatic. Now, Titan onto the rifles. They have to pick up some momentum here. They have to get the round and take it to Fnatic because they're in danger of being left standing. I feel like it's going to be a shame that we're not going to see too much Titan on this T side if Fnatic keep this pace up. You know, you want to see how they kind of work around the way Fnatic are playing, um, how they adapt to strategies, which I still rate as one of the best things you can have as a team to turn you into a good team, into a great team. But Fnatic, they go for the early four-man stack on outside. They're playing for the retake on inner, and Flush already has a challenge. Immediately gets a catch, gets a flash, catches three of them perfectly. And gets the kill. Can catch up in case they come around the corner. Will finally get taken down by existence, but the damage is done. Now it's three on three. Grips from range. Will manage to take down Maniac. And Olaf Meister just a challenge on existence, but existence comes out on top. Now shocks the danger man. We talked about how little kills he's had. This could be a perfect role for him because existence has dropped down now, but they're aware of the position. It's going to be Crims. Had next to no health, just 23 health, but Chops couldn't land a single bullet. And in the end, it was a clean defuse for Pronax. So 13-5, pressure on, and Titan, well, I think they need to start looking towards the second map, which is going to be Inferno. And you've got to give that towards Fnatic. It was their map choice after all. Yeah, I think one thing we need to see Titan do in this, uh, in this T side half, though, is pick up the pace, be very quick. You saw that Fnatic, actually, there's two options. You can be very quick and try to overrun the man before he gets that retreat back into his own team, or you can kind of force these rotates by playing aggressive, playing quick, and then go back onto the outside if you want to hit inner in the beginning. Um, because Fnatic have been rotating very, very quickly. JW's actually towards the ladder where we can flank behind the entire team with Olaf Meister already pushed up inside as well on inner. This is going to be very difficult for Titan to pull anything off, to even just get a kill alone. 
just going to hope that these Tech Nines work in their favour, but you can see Olaf I see he has this lined up perfectly. There's the first one, hits himself one head, quickly flicks away, gets a second mid-air, it's going to be a third as they drop down. RPK does manage to respond on Flusher, but JW already around the back, coming up from Popdog, quickly on towards them. Now just the two of them trying to hold off. Bomb plant does go down from Chops there, but it's going to be a futile task to try and hold on to that plant. It will get defused, so Fnatic will take it 14 to 5 here. <laughs> Titan can't find it, it's in the smoke. There it is, finally gets her in the end. It has a kit, so no problems for them. Oh, <laughs> okay. Right, fine, they're just going to play fun with it and go looking for weapons. But Olaf will finish things off. So 14 5, convincing performance, I think, from Fnatic so far. Yeah, very convincing. Um, you know, Titan, they got the best of a bad situation. They got the bomb down at least. They get some extra money come into this potentially final round here. They have the op on Smith. Now, he's been able to perform the CT side in towards middle and towards yard. But I'm going to see if he's going to be able to open up any of these sites or open up any of these locations on the map uh, with this op. You can see he's playing very defensive, expecting Fnatic to change up the pace a little bit, maybe get very aggressive. But you can see Fnatic, they're still committing four men on outside and beginning, at least within the first 30, 45 seconds of the round, every single time until Flesha calls for help. So this is not the direction that Titan want to be hitting. The problem is they've been shut down on the inner almost every single time. Trying to sell the double fake. Smith is going to line up a shot on Pronax, but doesn't land it. Then Pronax got all the information he needed. Now they're just going to flash them completely in Ivy. So, Titan set the clock, figure out where they're going. It looks like they're going to be one rotating down towards main. RPK still waiting around the side. Existence will find Pronax. Didn't see where that one went down. That was actually in Ivy, I think it was. Yeah, through the smoke, actually. Had to have been. Why we're seeing existence trying to lay it down. JW expecting someone. Look at Crims, he's lying in wait. They can actually drop down. He might catch him on the head. Smith, meanwhile, over on towards Ivy. He's gonna push on through. Olaf Meister's ready and waiting though. He's gonna push straight in. Beautiful little one by the resistance there. Flush the response and now it's a two on two. In the yard. Quickly turns as well one on two. As Flush at the last man standing. Titan need this round. They need anything they can gather from this one because point is beckoning. Problem is, it's Flusher they're against. The man we saw clutch many around yesterday. Oh, and they just line up perfectly for him into the spray. That's just about the worst look you can have for Titan. I was just about to say, too, because Titan, they didn't refrag at all when we saw Olaf Meister and Flusher pick up those initial two kills, and then they try to go for the refrag, but they line up straight into Flusher's spray, so that didn't work out at all. And now Fnatic are on match point. You can see even JW on a max seven. I uh, see an AUG picked up for Crims. See a lot of AKs picked up for Titan, throwing everything they have into this round. Well, Smiths, what are you going to go with that sword off? You're going to have the Mag 7 coming through as well, RPK. Puts paint to that, not going to have any of those shenanigans from JW. They play around with them, but 15-5 is the score, and it is a, a true score because it was all done on the T side for Fnatic. Titan not really being able to get anything going after losing the pistol here on the T side, as you would expect. It is going to be a B hit, it looks like. Now Flusher is the one that plays in wait. He's going to get support. That grenade is going to be beautiful. It's going to catch on three of them. They try and get caught on that ramp. The flash also did enough to delay things. And Crims finally gets himself down there. Gets himself one with the orb. Flusher comes around the side. Easy one on towards RPK. As they gain all of the angles. Bombplant does go down, but there's two members of Titan remain. Flusher at bay. Finally gets taken down by Smith, but it's now a one on one. Oh, my stuff. Oh, but it's a long range. Smith has managed to get himself an AK. Oh, and that's going to be a little pop flash. The defuse is coming through. Smith is not going to get there in time. And it will be Fnatic that close it out. 16-5. Very, very dominant first map here on train. And remember, that was Titan's map choice with Inferno to follow and Cobblestone afterwards. Fnatic have just got to be so confident now. They do, they do. And I really want to point in that last round particularly though, for the way Flusher played it too. Because he saw the smoke coming down, and he's like, alright, I need to do something to stop them from pushing 3-2 on me from upper and from lower. So he Molotovs and Nage, which staggers the way that Titan can attack the site. Obviously they got in nonetheless, but it allowed him to also back away safely the rest of the team to come through with Crims of the Ark to help him out. But that was just Fnatic showing true Fnatic style. I think they came in a little bit angry into this one, wanting to pick up a, a victory convincingly, and they did just that. Now you see the teams just passing by behind us, going outside, get a little breath of hot air. <laughs> it's not really fresh air, is it? But uh, they're going out. RPK, you're po poking. <laughs> Be careful, there's a tank. You might have you. <laughs>
<laughs> it didn't look like a tank that game. Yeah, well, Crims, you may notice, by the way, this is something that I noticed, Crims hasn't got his hat on. Finally, finally, he's come to Dubai and realized, you know what, I probably shouldn't wear this hat anymore. A little too hot. A little <laughs> he little tweeted too saying hot. that maybe his beanie is his like, lucky charm. Uh, that's <laughs> why they lost against TSM. But yeah, it's a little too warm, probably, for them to be wearing that outside. Yeah, very hot outside. We are in a beautiful air-conditioned uh, building right now, so that's why we're all fine. But that was the first map. Second map will be Inferno. Fnatic, it is their choice. You'd expect them to be favourites going into that one. I mean, you ju I only think back and have sh shivers when I think back to the 16-2 that Fnatic put against Navi, the quickest game of Cologne. Uh, it's possible that it could happen again. It's possible. I will say this for Titan, though. I remember actually want, uh, watching Renegades play against them before you saw when Cologne kicked off, saying that they like never beat Titan at boot camp. Um, their Inferno is ridiculously strong. The way they play is really well done, and an RPK really shines on a map like that, but it's fanatic. Um, we're going to find out if they can do it, but I, I have hopes for Titan that they can at least pull off a better score than they did here and hopefully take into a third map. Uh, fantastic stuff. Dominant first map performance from Fnatic. We'll be back with the next one. It is ESL ESEA Invitational here in Dubai.